What's up, Fikes? I'm Cameron. I'm Haley, and welcome back to Your Semen News. Are you listening? Yeah. Hey, congrats on your scholarship. Thanks, I was really shocked when I got it. What'd you get it for? Well, we have a story on it. Congratulations, come on up here. Recently, senior Cameron Pendleton was awarded with a scholarship to Emporia State University. Early Bird Scholarship is a brand new scholarship out of our admissions office. We had four winners this year, and all students had to do was apply and be admitted before December 1st. So this is something that we hope to continue every year, so just an easy way uh, for students to gain a little extra money to go to school because their name gets put into a drawing, all those that were admitted before that date. And then we pour, pulled excuse me, four lucky winners, and Cameron was one of those. I'm going to use my scholarship to go into teaching and that's what I plan to go to college for is English education. Were you expecting this? No, not at all. Make sure to congratulate her if you see her in the hallway. Now back to the studio. Wow Cameron, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Let's get into the news. Friday is the last day to submit a design for the Fine Arts Booster Club contest. The winner will receive a $100 gift card and be selected on January 28th. The Viking Brew will be selling half price vanilla lattes on Friday morning. The speed limit in the parking lot is 10 miles per hour. Please obey the speed limit. Also, make sure you scrape your windows before driving. Beginning January 7th, the 9th grade Second Chance Breakfast will be available during passing period in the 9th grade lines. Students may get one breakfast meal per day. There has been several car vandalisms. Let's go check out more information. Some Seaman students have recently had car windows smashed through. The first time I noticed my car window was broken was after school a couple days ago on Wednesday. And I originally thought that like someone from like in this neighborhood or something like took like some, like an ice pick or like BB gun or whatever and like stabbed it into my window or whatever. And then, obviously, since I can't really show it from this side because, you know, we had to put a garbage bag and duct tape over it. But um, I learned that this had been happening, like, like around, like, 50 people or, like, 70 people have had this happen to them as well around my neighborhood. So, like, someone's been, like, taking, like, a BB gun or whatever and, like, shooting at their back window. So I got lucky and it was only my back side window, which wouldn't have been ha as expensive as like my actual back window or my front window. So even though you couldn't see the damage on the outside, here's what it looks like on the inside. And I haven't been able to clean out the back yet, but there's so much glass back here. If you look over here, you can kind of see the small indent where the little BB could have come in and then like all the glass that is broken off of that side window where the trash bag is showing. And I'm feeling like once I slam this shut, more glass is gonna fall in here, which is gonna be lovely. But um, I don't know why someone would do this really. Like they're just going around vandalizing cars for like no reason other than to just vandalize them. From what I know, they're not stealing anything out of them. Not all were lucky enough to have side windows hit. Some had back windows destroyed. Um, I was getting ready to go out to school, you know, scrape off my windows and stuff, walk out probably, oh, I'd say it would have been Tuesday of this week, walk out, open my window, or open my door to get out my scraper, hear a little shattering in the back, check my back window, whole thing shattered through. Um, the damage, I'd say, my back window is probably about, I'd say this wide by this much, and it took up about a third of the window, just smashed through, not very nice, wasn't happy. This is going to be a warning to everyone in the Urban Hills District. Make sure your car is, like, protected. Don't, like, if you need to put it in the garage or just make sure, like, your windows are safe because you don't know if your car will be shot up with a BB. With this going on in Topeka, make sure you park your car in a safe place, preferably inside. Now over to sports after this quick commercial break.
Congratulations to Sam Payne for being selected to play in the 2019 Kansas Shrine Bowl. That's all we have for sports. Now over to weatherman Josh Duncan after the break. Good afternoon to you. We are looking at one final mild day this week with a high of 57 degrees. Isolated showers are possible, but it's really not looking like we're going to get a whole lot of rain. This could be anywhere from the afternoon to the evening hours, but overall it's just another mild day, and that's what we're looking at through the rest of the day. Here we go, let's time out the rain chance. 3 p.m., some isolated showers and drizzle across extreme eastern portions of the state, continuing through 6 p.m. and even into the early evening hours. But by midnight, I think a lot of this is really getting too far away for us to see any lingering precipitation. So just a couple opportunities for some very light showers or drizzle through the rest of the day. And then our attention does turn to the wind. It does pick up a little bit this afternoon, but especially tomorrow. Here's our hourly wind gust forecast. Morning, not too bad, but by the afternoon, winds frequently gusting to 30 miles per hour tomorrow. So yes, after today's slight rain chance, tomorrow is windy. And as you'll see here on your SVTV seven day forecast, we turn colder as well. Just 45 degrees tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies, clouds slowly decreasing throughout the day, and then a cooler weather pattern does set up heading into the weekend. We should have more sunshine tomorrow, but overall highs still remain above average, generally in the middle 40s. Right now, Christmas looks dry with 48 degrees. Now, back to your anchors. Hope you're having a good finals week, and don't forget Christmas is only six days away. That's all we have for today, Bikes. We're leaving you with a Christmas stand-up on traditions. So make sure you're being nice this season. Have a great day. What's up, Bikes? Since Christmas break's only a few days away, we went around to ask students what their favorite Christmas traditions are. What is your favorite Christmas tradition? Uh, I think I don't really have any Christmas traditions. We just sit at home and watch TV. Oh, wait, we always watch the Polite Express movie. That's our only Christmas tradition. Um, I go to Mexico every year. We go to Playa del Carmen and pretty much just go there for a week and be warm during Christmas. It's fun to have your shorts on. Um, we open one present on Christmas Eve and then we open the rest on Christmas morning. Um, my little sister makes like sprinkles and spreads them for the reindeer to eat on Christmas Eve. Um, after we make like gingerbread houses and we've had them at our house for a while, we drop them off of our porch and watch them like shatter. Um, just watching Christmas vacation with my family and hanging out with all of them. Uh, a couple days after Christmas, we, uh, as a family, all drive down to Colorado and we'll go on a huge ski trip. Well, my favorite tradition is in Spain, we have like a Santa, but in the 6th of June, that we call the Three Magic Queens, and it's like Santa, but two Santas in Christmas. Probably waking up early in the morning and then opening up gifts with the family. Um, so we do this shelf elf thing every year and this year I get to help move it around the house and yesterday I like made him hang from one of the chairs and my little sister was really surprised about it. She was laughing. My aunt and uncle come to town from Minnesota. It's pretty cool. We go to my grandma's house and I eat pie and mashed potatoes. <laughs> I don't do anything, <laughs> literally nothing at all. Hope you guys have a good Christmas break. Now back to your anchors. 